Let's welcome in Pete Prisco and Rick Spielman there at Bengals training camp. Let's start with the Super Bowl hangover. Pete, I want to start with you. Um, look, maybe when you're younger, you can recover from a hangover faster, a little bit better, pop an aspirin, take a Gatorade, and you're good to go. Will that be the case with the Bengals this season? How do they avoid it? Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough to get back. And, you know, I talked to Jamar Chase earlier and asked him about that. But they put that kind of in the past and they're using it as motivation. I, I just think you're now one of the hunted. You know, going into last season, they weren't one of the hunted. When you get to a Super Bowl, even if you lose it, you're now one of the hunted teams. And that's the toughest part of it is everybody's gunning for you. And so they have to learn to deal with that. It's a young team in a lot of spots. So that's something they're going to have to learn to deal with. Yeah, and one thing, one fact is only three of 27 teams that, made, that lost in the Super Bowl were able to advance to the uh, championship game the following year. But they do have a young team with a lot of young talent, especially on the uh, offensive side of the skill positions. Pete, you mentioned you talked to Jamar Chase there. What were some of your big takeaways from talking to him today? Well, one of the things is, remember a year ago this time, uh, everybody was talking about he can't catch the ball. I mean, why, why can't he catch the football? What's the problem? Oh, he's going to be a bust. And uh, I did ask him about that. He said, he, look, everybody made a big deal out of it. What he's done, though, is he worked to make himself a better receiver and a be have better hands. And after practice, he goes on the jugs machine well after the practice is concluded. He has this drill where he catches 100 tennis balls off the wall to increase his uh, you know, hand-eye coordination. So I think all that stuff was overblown. I said it then, I, I agreed with it, and he kind of felt that way as well. He's a great receiver and he's gonna be even better. And there's no question when you asked him and we asked him off camera, that he thinks he's a better receiver than Justin Jefferson. Oh, he said that. They're good <laughs> friends, but he said it. And we, we're going to see Justin Jefferson in a couple of weeks. We'll see what he has to say. That'll be a lot of fun. You know, Rick, we, we've seen your sunglasses quite a few times, and I've just realized Joe Burrow probably copied you uh, getting the sunglasses. <laughs> like, I mean, those are the exact same ones. But look, let's talk about Joe Burrow. Joe Cool there. Again, I believe he stole your sunglasses. Uh, but what can we expect from him going into the season? Yeah, I think he's going into a third year, and he's just going to continue to ascend, especially with the weapons around him. He probably has the three best receivers in the NFL for the combination. And, uh, you know, the one receiver that really sticks out to me is Higgins. That doesn't get enough credit because you're always talking about Chase. But he was actually more productive from week eight through the Super Bowl than Chase was in yards and in yards per catch. So, uh, and he's coming up for a contract extension next year as well. But you add in Joe Mixon and you add in a tight end, Hayden Hurst now, who's probably a better receiver, not as good as blocker. Uh, as they had last year, but uh, they're loaded on the offensive side of the ball. We haven't even got to the offensive line yet. Yeah, and we'll talk about the offensive line, but as far as Joe Burrow, look, he had the appendectomy, kind of walked through the locker room, looked a little frail, but that's to be expected, but he's going to be fine. He's going to be a, a better quarterback than he was a year ago. I always go back, and everybody in our place, you know this, man, everybody plays, oh, 2 and 10, 2 and 10. I said 1 and 10. I said he'd win 1 Super Bowl in 10, and maybe 2. I'm sticking by it. I still think he's going to win 1. One in, one in the next nine. How about that? <laughs> Pete, since I like your proclamations, would you say this is the best receiving core in the NFL? I would say it is. And you mismentioned T. Higgins doesn't get the credit he deserves. It's funny, when you have two really great receivers, the guy who's always second never gets the due he deserves. And, and I can use one of my past references for that. Back in the day when Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell, who was a coach on your staff yeah, in yeah. Minnesota, he still is, Keenan would always wander over and say, hey, we're 1-1A. One one uh, most of the time it was 1-2, and two, but Keenan was a hell of a receiver, but he never got the due that Jimmy got, and I don't think T. Higgins is going to get the credit he deserves because of Chase. And, and I know what T. Higgins feels like because next to Pete over these last two weeks, I feel like a two that no one wants to talk yeah, you're about. More like a, you're more like a three. You're, you're more like a three. You guys are having way too much fun out there. Rick, you mentioned the offensive line. Let's talk about it getting revamped. Joe Burrow, 70 times he was sacked between the regular season and the postseason. That is 22 more sacks than any other quarterback in that time period. How good does this offensive line look right now? Well, one, he got sacked 19 times during the playoffs, and there was no other quarterback that was sacked that many times that made it to the playoffs last year. So Cincinnati, and a little bit out of character of what they've done in the past, they went out and spent money on this offensive line. They go out and get Collins. They go out and get Kappa. They go out and get Karras. And uh, Carmen Jackson, he needs to step up this year, and I think he's been having a good camp. But if they can improve the offensive line, and with all the weapons they have on offense, they're just going to continue to ascend.
Yeah, and look, he was brutalized at times last year. You looked at those games. I mean, he just got knocked on his butt. And if it wasn't for his ability to move, he would have been. Those numbers would have been even higher. They were awful on the offensive line last year. They're going to be good this year. Uh, you mentioned Lyle Collins, a right tackle, good player. Uh, you go get a veteran like Kappa to play right guard. That means that right side is now secure. Ted Karras, good veteran center. And you mentioned J Jackson Carmen at left guard is probably going to win the job, or he's competing for the job. He's a big physical player. They will have four new starting offensive linemen on that group. Sometimes change is good in this case it's really good we'll go to the other side of the ball really quick pete what about the pass rush well i think the pass rush is good i mean look you look at this situation last year i think they started to feel who they were as a defense as they got to the playoffs remember they were an explosive offense for a lot of the season they struggled at times on defense but as they got to the playoffs and into the super bowl the defense really came together and i think it's a good young group with a lot of guys you know trey hendrickson had a big year last year rushing the passer and i think he's going to have another big year this year yeah and in a draft this year their first three picks went all on the defensive side of the ball so they went offense and spent all the money in free agency to fix a major problem on the offensive line and now they go out and have their first three picks to the defensive side of the ball a lot of things looking bright for the Bengals out there let's look at their win total it is set at nine and a half they went 10 and 17 or excuse me uh 10 and 7 total of 17 so they won 10 what do you think about the win total of nine and a half Rick Oh, they're going to go. We're going to win more nine and a half games. They play in a tough division in the AFC North, but last year they beat Pittsburgh twice. They beat Baltimore twice, one game with Lamar Jackson playing. And when they played Baltimore, who's known for their defense, they threw up 41 points both of those times. They were 0 and 2 against Cleveland, but I don't believe anyone played in that last game against the Cleveland Browns. So I believe they do have the third toughest schedule in the NFL this year, but with all the moves they made this offseason, especially securing the offensive line, they will go above that total. I agree. I think they're going over that total. When you look at this team, I don't think they knew who they were a year ago. It kind of just got there. You know, there were young players just emerging. Well, this is another year where they're going to be even better. I think this is a better football team, much better, by the way, than the one that went to the Super Bowl last year. Now, whether they can navigate the schedule and get through all the stuff that goes on during the season, that's to be remains to be seen. This is a better football team than a year ago. And, and I can share one quick story. We played, we had the opener in Cincinnati last year, and we, we thought it was going to be the old Bengals. And then we came in here, we end up losing in overtime, but watching that game and evaluating their talent, you knew this is not the same Cincinnati Bengals team. Let's look at their odds going into the season. Because both of you are saying they could be as good, if not better, than they were last season. Uh, so they are plus 200 to win the AFC North. Right now they're sitting behind the Ravens. 11 to 1 odds to win the AFC. They are the sixth favorite there. 22 to 1 odds to win the Super Bowl. Pete, we'll start with you. Yeah, look, it's tough to really, when you look at the AFC, it's hard to imagine who's going to the Super Bowl. There's so many good teams. I mean, you look at Buffalo, you look at the teams out west, but they will be in the mix. This team will be in the mix. We saw the Colts uh, the past couple of days. I think they're a better football team than the Colts. I think they're the best team in their division. So come January, they will be pushing for a Super Bowl. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think they will. But why would they be behind Baltimore? They have to I be the lead. That. Yeah, I don't get they're that either. The they're better than the Ravens. And what did the Ravens do? They had a great draft. They have good personnel. And not to jump on the Ravens bandwagon here, but they did not add any receivers to help Lamar Jackson. This is a better roster than the Baltimore Ravens. You're not jumping on their bandwagon. You're criticizing them. Okay, I'm learning this media stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pete just told me to wear... Pete, yeah, Pete told me to wear sunglasses, so... No, I did <laughs> do You, you I need over some, here, I take them off. They want to see me. I got him right here. Dane makes me take him off. See? <laughs> there you oh, go. Oh, there you go. You guys look so. Somebody take a picture of that. That is the picture from this training camp tour. <laughs> Gentlemen, you look great. Thanks so much for joining us. Have fun out there. Hope you get some blizzards. Uh, Pete, please do not put pickles in them like you said you did yesterday. All right, CBS Sports, the NFL returns to CBS on September 11th. We are counting down the days. Make sure to watch it on CBS or you can stream it on Paramount+. Plus. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.